there was something I wanted to get to as I'm putting together a list about, okay, the Cardinals are 20 games under 500. Okay, let's come up with 20 reasons why that is. And some are related to the others. They're not all separate entities, but there's different layers. Um, but I'm like, you know, I keep talking about it on, on the show with Jim Hewer, how the, the Cardinals failing, you know, one of the primary failings has been they, uh, their inability – to draft and fully develop premium starting pitchers. And I'm talking about pitchers that they've drafted. So, in other words, this would uh, exclude, say, Carlos Martinez. But then again, you know, Carlos Martinez originally signed with Boston anyway. Uh, But I'm just talking about using the draft because the Cardinals have always been big about using the draft. They've always found pitching to plug in and pitching that has done really good things for them. And they're missing that. And I decided, you know, one thing I want to do, and I took 10, 10, 15 minutes that I didn't really have, to be honest with you, to scope this out. And here's what I came up with. Now, listen, let's start with this. Because we all know that the Cardinals' biggest problem is starting pitching. And it's been heading this way for a long time. Mosellac and Gersh were able to get some help at the trade deadline to add happened Lester in 2021 and then even better Montgomery in Quintana last year so you I do give them credit for being able to hustle at the deadline and find patches uh those two guys last year were better than that they were really good um so credit for that but on the other hand it should never have happened two years in a row where you're two starting pitchers short because you haven't done your job in the offseason You've ignored an obvious problem that showed signs of, like, sort of leaving you thin on starting pay. Well, we're fine. Uh, Just this hubris uh, that they've been in. Um, And so I said, look, whatever happened to them drafting and developing a couple of guys that could be – like Waka was an example. It's not his fault that that shoulder blade problem became a recurring thing. They drafted Waka in the first round in I believe 2012 but it was he didn't really pitch until he if he pitched anything in 2012 in the minors they wanted to just give him time off because he pitched a lot at Texas A&M too much probably you know and uh, but by 2013 you know uh, they're not they don't win the pennant they're not in the World Series without Michael Waka he was phenomenal and unfortunately it didn't last I don't blame the Cardinals for that though it was a good draft pick things happen pitchers break then you have Jack Flaherty. They drafted him in the first round of 2014. And look, Jack Flaherty was a high school kid, so it took him a while. But uh, listen, he uh, he was pretty phenomenal in 2019. And yes, they did make the postseason. So he had an impact. Then again, here they go, injuries. But I, I'm like, you know, am I missing anybody? So I thought, okay, we knew about Waka, and then we knew about Flaherty. So Flaherty was the 2014 draft. Let's start with 2015. And I looked in the draft, again, just the draft, because it's not like the Cardinals are signing international pitchers to, to like, big contracts, right? Um, so from 2015 through 2022, and listen, there, there are some guys drafted in 2022 that already are in the majors. Waka made that leap pretty quick, too. That's why I included last year's draft. So from 2015 through 2022, five pitchers were chosen by the Cardinals who have actually, you know, um, have started in the major leagues for them. Um, We're talking about Dakota Hudson, Jake Woodford, Andre Pallante, Jordan Hicks, and Zach Thompson. That's it. Uh, 73, it's 111 starts between those guys because you got to remember, Hicks was a starter for a while. So those guys that they drafted from 2015 through 2022, and they drafted others that never made it to the major major leagues are still in the minors, like Michael McCreevy would be an example. Um, so there's five guys who made 111 start, but 73 of those starts are made, that's about 67% of the total were made by Hudson. Jake Woodford, 16 starts. Pallante, 10 starts. Hicks, 8 starts. Zach Thompson, uh, I think, 4 starts. So Hudson is 31 and 17 as a Cardinals starting pitcher. But listen, let's face it, his career kind of went south. 
Uh, that 31 and 17 record was really kind of puffed up by great run support for a while. Listen, he's doing he's doing what he can now. I, I, I'm you know I'm not I'm not as nasty about him as I have been. So Hudson is the one guy that at least won some games. You know, um, if you look at the win loss record individually of Woodford, Palante, Hicks, and Thompson when they've started a game, um, they're eight and fourteen. I don't think that's uh, that's certainly not Zach Thompson's fault. So it's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. That's eight drafts. And I know they got Tink Hentz down below. And I know maybe Gordon Graceffo will be up here and he'll be good. I, I don't know. Ian Bedell. There's, there's a few other guys that have some promise. But we're talking about eight drafts, and this is all you have to show for your drafting and developing of starting pitchers. And Hudson looked like he was on track to have a nice career, and then he went sideways. Woodford is, you know, kind of one of those guys. I mean, he's not going to be a dominant starter. He can do a good job if he's used properly. Palante doesn't start anymore. He's a bad reliever that the manager, for some reason, is infatuated with. The Hicks thing is one of the dumbest things the Cardinals uh, front office ever did putting him in the rotation and then Zach Thompson they tried like hell to screw him up but he fought through it and he looks like he's got a chance to be a solid starter in the major leagues but that's all you've got to show for eight for your last eight drafts before this year's draft that ain't much and here's what the deal is Bill DeWitt has always shied away from big free agent contracts for starting pitchers he famously or infamously passed on Max Scherzer he passed on others. He did make a wild run uh, for his, based on his, the way he goes about things. He did make a wild run for David Price. Unfortunately, David Price kind of double crossed the Cardinals at the last minute and signed with the Red Sox. But Bill DeWitt, I've talked to him about it. He just thinks starting pitchers are too risky. They break down. You sign them, you sign them at your own risk. A lot of times you don't get your money's worth because of injuries. So you got to be really, really careful. That's his operational philosophy. Well, okay. Some of you are thinking, what do you mean, okay? (laughs) Hear me out. If you're going to be, if that's going to be your attitude about signing premium, and I'm talking about premium starting pitchers that will seriously upgrade your rotation. If you're going to have the attitude, it's like, well, but boy, uh, disasters happen. Injuries happen. It's a lot of risk. It's too much risk that I'm comfortable with. Okay. But you better cash in. You better draft and develop really, really, really good starting pitchers and a lot of them. And I'm talking about, yeah, it's okay. You draft and develop a couple mid-rotation guys, maybe a solid back-of-the-rotation guy, but you also draft and develop a couple of guys who can lead your rotation. They've done none of that. And so – Bill DeWitt, we know that he's squeamish about spending big, big money on starting pitchers. And part of that reason is because he did he got out of his comfort zone and spent $80 million to sign Mike Leake to a five-year contract. And he didn't fit in with the, uh, the gang down there who had their own ideas about certain things. And, um, you know, it was like uh, late in the second season, they, they gave him away to Seattle and then were – ended up paying a part of his salary for several years. And then they gave Stephen Matz four years, $44 million. These have been the only two expenditures of any note for a starting pitcher Bill DeWitt has made for outside free agents. So to this point, the Matz thing hasn't worked out. We, we know the leak thing did not work out. They've also traded away uh, two young, really outstanding starting pitchers in – Alcantara, Cy Young Award winner in Miami, and Zach Gallen, who, at least in theory, is in the hunt for a Cy Young this year, the Arizona pitcher. So they haven't, they haven't drafted and developed any premium starting pitchers in a long time. And even the ones they did did not last. I'm talking about Flaherty and Waco. Um, so you, you can't say, well, listen, we just don't think it's worth the risk because – we all know there's a high rate of pitchers breaking down. We don't think it's worth the risk. That's why we focus on draft and development. Okay. 
that's cool with me as long as you are drafting and developing and funneling premium caliber starting pitchers to your major league rotation. But you're not doing that. Maybe Tink Hence will break the cycle of mediocrity, but you're not doing that. I'll give you an example of uh, the Cardinals drafting poorly when it comes to uh, starting pitchers. And this is one example, and it's based on one guy. The Cubs drafted a guy named Jordan Wicks in the first round a couple years ago. He's a lefty. And he made a pretty quick ride through the major, through the minor leagues. He made his major league debut, I think, earlier. That it, was la- it was last week, and he was mm-hmm. phenomenal. Yep. He struck out nine. His stuff was filthy, right? And he was tearing it up at the minor league level. So they drafted him, and they're all ecstatic. They're like, oh, me, we got his Look, we really think we got a guy. It's not Justin Steele. Yeah, we got him. They drafted him actually back in 2016. So it wasn't anything that happened recently. But still, just Justin Steele's great. They drafted Hendricks. That worked out. But he's older now. But they, re- they are so fired up about this Jordan Wicks. And – Maybe Jordan Wicks becomes a, a number one starter, number two type starter, number one A type starter. It's premature to say he'll do that, but he has the potential to do that. And he's and he's with all due respect to the young pitchers the Cardinals have that have even been in the minor in the majors for a little while. Jordan Wicks has got more talent, more potential than any of them. Uh, you know, um, the Cardinals could have drafted him. They bypassed him. And then later in the first round, they drafted Michael McCreevy. This is exactly what the hell I'm talking about. This Jordan Wicks, their arch rival drafted him because, by the way, you had a former Cardinals guy, Dan Katrovitz, who has really cleaned up their drafts in terms of pitching. All of a sudden, the Cubs are developing pitching, unlike the Cardinals. And... Dan Kantrovitz, one of the native St. Louis, and you know, was one of these guys that felt he'll never admit it. In fact, he got mad at me because I wrote it one time. Felt like he was sort of being moved aside a little bit, not really being utilized the way that he could help the team in a way he wanted to help the team. Because Mosaic at some point just turned absolutely power hungry. So so Kantrovitz left and he ended up with the Cubs. In fact, the Cardinals tried to rehire him and he was like, No, thank you. He signed well, signed over the Cubs, and he's now fine and pitching for them. Huge mistake by DeWitt and Mazalik. Huge. So now they got a guy who was one of their own, and he's capable of identifying, scouting, developing, drafting, really promising starting pitching talent. And the Cardinals are, uh, you know, this Mike, Michael McGreevy, uh, you know, uh, we think he can get to the majors pretty fast. Number one, he hasn't. Number two, if he was any good, he would be up here this year, and he's not. But they uh, – and if, I, if I'd if i go through some of these drafts, I could come up with more. But this is one recent example of what I'm talking about. So you got Bill DeWitt. Oh, I don't want to spend – man, these guys are so expensive. And they break down or they get – or they age prematurely and blah, 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 blah. Well, Bill – all due respect if you are flunking out on drafting and developing starting pitchers and you are not drafting or developing any premium starters tink hence could be that guy but he's not yet well how in the hell are you going to seriously upgrade your starting rotation if you ain't going to sign top guys and pay the month the going rate if you're going to stay out of that market or you're going to get outbid. But then on the other hand, you're not drafting anybody or developing anybody that would be a serious upgrade to your rotation. And not just one guy, you would need a couple, three of those guys. So you wonder, you say, well, how'd the Cardinals get to this place? I just explained it. You got an owner that is, he just, he's not in, in, of the mind or the spirit of the heart to spend a fortune on starting pitching. But yet the thing that he he believes in more than anything, drafting and developing starting pitching, is failing. And so not that anyone out there is wondering 
how the Cardinals ended up with such a crappy rotation with no depth and very little quality. And this has been happening now for three years in a row, but it really hit bottom this year. Well, how did they get to this place? Well, that's exactly why they got to this place. You can use, you can tell the fans and the media, well, you know, we, we always believe in drafting and developing. That's why we, you know, that's why I hired, that's why I brought Luno in here, blah, 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 blah. It just makes more economic sense, which, by the way, people don't want to hear it because there's some people out there who want Bill DeWitt to spend, even if it's foolish. They want him to spend like he's a drunken sailor on shore leave, to use that piece slave. You know, it doesn't matter if it makes sense. I just was, I want him to throw money away just to show me he's willing to do it. I'm not like that. But if you're not willing to spend a lot of money on proven, established number one, number two starters, and you look at Max Scherzer, who would have been the face, the face of your franchise for a long time, and at one point that was just dreaming of pitching for his hometown team, and you take a pass on him, even though he had already won a Cy Young with Detroit and he was a free agent and he wanted to come home and you basically gave him the cold shoulder. Oh, that's too expensive. That's too much money. That's a Boris thing. Well, you can't do that if you're, if you're failing to draft and develop the pitchers that you need. That's how you get to where they are now. That's why you're 20 games under 500. It's still the number one reason. But it ties in ownership. It ties in Mosaic. It, 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 uh, it ties in their entire system. I, I think the last guy to blame, uh, the last people to blame are the actual pitchers. I mean, they're just drafted. It's not their fault that they were drafted, even though they don't strike people out and they're, there's nothing overwhelmingly positive or exciting about them. I'm, I don't blame those guys. It's the people scouting, drafting, and developing. And, you know, by the way, that, uh, that applies to Randy Flores. He drafted some of these guys that are just guys. And I think Randy Flores, and I, th- I, think, his, I, I think his baby, so to speak, is going to be Tink Hentz. And I, think, I do think Graceffo still has potential to be pretty good. We'll see. But, uh, you know, Bill, you, you, Bill, you can't – you're never going to get out of this starting pitching hell if you, A, cannot draft and develop them on your own. B, you, you will not spend what is necessary market value on premium starting pitchers. If you, if you are not going to do either one of those things, well, welcome to 20 games below 500 for the first time since you've owned the team. 28 years. You're at the low point. And we know the number one reason why. Anyway, that's on my list. It's amazing how bad it's been. I mean, they always... They, they, these people think like Andre Pallanti's like a big stud. Oh. I mean, it's unbelievable. And then what they do is they, Moselak and all of them, they want to cover their own posteriors because it's like, well, we, you know, we haven't drafted or developed pitching and blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, uh, oh, well, we love Pallanti. Oh, we love him. Oh, we loved him. And we got him like in the fifth round or whatever. And they want to show him off. And then when the rest of the league figures them out, once they see the rookie and they realize, well, wait a minute, dude can't get right-handed batters up. I don't, we don't have to pinch at a lefty. You send our right-handed guys out there. He, they, they, they pummel them. And Momal's walking to the mound and calling for Palante. is like, yeah, that's, not, that's the ace up my sleeve. No, it's not. It's a guy with an ERA over five. What the hell? Why are you obsessed with him? It's because the Cardinals want to prove they're smarter than everybody else who could have drafted Pallante, right? Yeah, it, it's it's amazing to watch. I don't I don't get the fascination with him either. I, every time he comes in, it's like oh he gets oh, last he, night he gets a couple outs and then you go yeah. uh oh there's uh, he had him out too he let him get away he walked now there's a hit now we got a run oh there's a run it's like come on what the heck's happened and we. A texter says, Bernie, Mo says he needs three pitchers. I think he needs six or seven to fill out this whole pitching staff next year. Well, they can take some flyers on guys at a lower scale, maybe to, you know, make good contracts or whatever. But, yeah, I, listen, I think 
hopefully Thompson will develop. Uh, early signs are good. Uh, maybe that's one that they hit on. They, uh, I repeat, they really did almost screw him up. They sure as hell gave it a good effort yeah, to did. completely mess this kid up. Uh, maybe Hence will be that guy. Maybe Graceffo will materialize. Uh, uh, he had a setback this year. That's okay. It happens in terms of, you know, my, relatively minor injury, and they're extra careful with him. Uh, maybe a couple of these starting pitchers that they got in the, uh, the sell-off um, um, what's his name? Uh, the, the, the kid from uh, Texas, the first rounder. Uh, no, was it Roby? Yeah, yeah. Roby. I, he, I don't he know He pitched why the other night. He got three innings in the other night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or Rom uh, for two, and there's mm-hmm. others. Uh, maybe they'll one or two of those guys will be developed to where you have a, at least good depth as starting pitcher candidates. But, no, they're going to have to go. I, I, I don't buy the three. I don't believe that for a second. I just I just don't. Cardinals fans will be fortunate if they actually get aggressive about acquiring two really good starting pitchers. But, again, I you know, it's like, oh, you know, well, I think we should go get Snell. Okay. Oh, really? Really? That's that's something else. I mean, nobody else has thought of that. Uh, you know, way to come up with that. I, I don't even, I don't even think that's realistic to think that the no. Cardinals are. You know, well, same with Nola. Yes, it's like all these guys. I wish, think, but, all these guys think they're Leo Mazzone or something. Well, you know that, uh, that Nola's pretty good. That, that Snell's pretty good. They, they they need to go get those guys. Okay, consider it done. Oh, you know. I mean, if they did it, I'd be like, great. But uh, it's the Cardinals' track record tells me they're they're not in on they're they're in on another Stephen Matz after the big guy signed. As and I'm not saying Stephen Matz isn't a bad pitcher, but he we're seeing some of the issues on why he was one of the guys that went after the big names were signed. He's got some issues, and they're showing their face right now. Injuries. 